to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I am Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And Robert made his one-time appearance, but uh, apparently is not going to be with us again tonight. So, uh, I thought I should make a just a second here to say this is episode twenty-five. Ooh, yes, a quarter century. Yes, a quarter century into six strings and things. Sweet. Yeah, I think we're just about ready for an outtakes episode. <laughs> oh no! No, <laughs> of course. We'd have to actually have outtakes. We could do uh, like uh, all the times that I put my foot in my mouth. I mean, that would pretty much uh, cover an entire show. <laughs> we could cop out and do a best of show. Yes, we could. That'd that be would a be a shorter a, show. Uh, <laughs> short show. <laughs> so, uh, loyal listeners, so uh, thank you for sticking out with us to this episode, twenty-five episodes. Uh, as always, if you like what you hear, please click like on YouTube. Click subscribe, subscribe to us on iTunes, uh, leave us a review. We'd love to hear what you think of the show. And if you have any suggestions for future episodes, please let us know. All right. So with that out of the way, Jesse, what have you done this week? Uh, actually, it was a fairly productive week, which was cool. So you were talking about the uh, the tunes, the sort of jazz blues tunes that you had been working on, Straight No Chaser and Freddie Freeloader. And so I... Uh, I thought, well, let's go revisit those. So I, I checked them out, looked at the sheet music, and listened to a couple, uh, downloaded a couple versions, you know, because there's a million versions of them out there. Um, and uh, they're pretty cool because the structures are pretty similar or uh, simple, you know, kind of based on the blues. But um, they definitely have some jazzy um, motives and development and stuff in them. So it's pretty cool. I also reminded myself of how absolutely god awful my sight reading is. I mean, I was I was no good when I was in college. I'm just <laughs> it's bad now. It's like, dude, what are these blackbird droppings on the paper? I don't know. <laughs> notes or guitar notes. players? We yes. read tab. <laughs> As they say, how do you get a rock guitar player to turn down? You put sheet music in front of him. <laughs> That's right. That's not right. But uh, no, I fumbled my way through, which is pretty cool, you know. So uh, yeah, very good. So that was a bit of it, um, and then also just. Um, you know, reminding myself some of the old uh, get, spend some time on the '80s hair metal uh, live shows that you can get on. You, you can find anything on YouTube now, and kind of playing along with some of those. You know, because you got to mix it up. You can't have too much jazz or blues without spandex and hair. Sure. <laughs> so absolutely, yeah. So there it is. I think that's that's mostly it. What have you been doing, Chris? Uh, well, some things. I've been still working with Straight No Chaser and. Um, Freddy the Freeloader, and really focusing on Freddy the, Freddy the Freeloader, where the last two bars of the progression goes to A flat seven, mm -hmm. and so basically at that point you want to change the song. The most of the song is in B flat, mm -hmm. and you know for good soloing you probably want to switch to an A flat seven uh, pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic scale during those last two bars. So that whole process of changing key, if you will. Is something I've still been working on. Uh, break out the loop pedal. I've got this uh, Jam Man Solo XT or something like that. Yeah. And it's a fantastic pedal because I can play 24 bars. Because um, for the free Freeloader is really two 12 bar runs because on the first run, bars 11 and 12 are A flat um, seven. And mm -hmm. then on the last two bar, if you do the 12 bars again, those last two bars actually complete the the 12 bar blues and typically right. you can play both those B flat seven fine. So, uh, working on changing keys there, uh, I've been sort of cementing the Iron Man solo, the first solo. I'm fairly happy with where it's at. I'm not quite the time, but I can keep time for a while. And then sort of like the last, I don't know, third or quarter of the solo, I can just make stuff up in C sharp minor. And, uh, it sounds pretty much okay with the record. Yeah. So no problems there. And uh, today I had my lesson and we started looking at, I think it's called the A train. Oh, yeah. Take That's the A train. Test. Yeah, take the A train. Yes. Apparently that got started because in uh, Harlem, 
uh, back in the heyday of jazz, you took the A train to get to Harlem to get to the cool places to jam with people right. and play jazz. So, which I is love- in fact the first line of the song. <laughs> Oh, is it? See, I don't know the song at all. Yeah, that's right in the, in the lyric. Yeah, I didn't know that. And I, I didn't even know the name of the song. See, now I feel like a complete fool. I should have probably listened to the song at some point. <laughs> but my instructor, was like, he wanted to show me some more complicated um, chord progressions. Yeah, right? I think that does like two changing two fives. Yeah, and I think there's like a D flat seven minor i i can't remember a mm-hmm. flat five minor seven i can't remember but anyway um doesn't matter there's some just some new stuff in there for me yeah. and i've never heard the lyrics i he played the first few bars and it was like oh i think i've heard that before i'm sure i've heard that before somewhere um yeah, I should listen to the song before I said, you know, oh, that's what I learned. <laughs> well, the thing about jazz is there's so many instrumental versions that it's kind of like, what were the lyrics? I mean, right, right. You might have heard 10 versions of it that didn't have lyrics anyway. So, right. So, yeah. yeah so that's, uh, I'm going to probably start messing around with that a little bit. And uh, I'm going to have a, an assignment where I need to find a song now that we want to delve into. And I'm, I'm going to shoot more for the traditional blues rock kind of thing that I usually work mm-hmm. on because as of late, we've been doing a lot of this jazz stuff. Although I have been messing around with some like jazz rhythm playing, I'll call it quote unquote jazz rhythm playing, um, just to try to break up the eighth note runs that I love to do when I'm playing rhythm. Right. So you mean like, uh, you know, the, the swing eights kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Swing eights kind of thing. Uh, that's cool. just stuff, yeah. Stuff that's new to me. Uh, I'm not going to be a jazz player. You know, I don't have much interest in becoming a jazz player right now, but it's good to sort of expand beyond one's sort of comfort oh, yeah. a little bit and see what I can incorporate from that into my own playing. Yeah. And, and that's what's really nice is these different kind of chord flavors that you get from jazz are really awesome to just color blues, you know, because they can be used. I mean, that minor seven flat five works really well in minor. I mean, like that two, five, one in jazz. If you do it in a minor key, that minor seven flat five is your, your two chord. So it's really, and it's definitely a a different flavor and one you sort of have to get used to if you're hanging on it. Cause that, um, you know, the flat five, that tritone yeah. is uh, always wants to be resolved, you know? Right. So, yeah, I think in that song, it resolves to a D7. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so. I'm looking yeah. at it right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I should yeah. have pulled the sheet music and uh, so I could actually say a few things intelligent about it. But, uh, hey, I just saw it, like, for the first time uh, eight hours ago. So, you know, there yeah. it is. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I've been working on. I think I'm going to sort of work out with my loop pedal a little bit more over the next couple weeks or so as I, you know, got to work on this improv stuff. So yeah, that's been my stuff. We talked about your stuff. We thought that uh, today what we would talk about on the show are the things we don't like about playing guitar. (laughs) I know this is a guitar podcast. And if you're listening to it, you like to play guitar and Jesse and I certainly love to play guitar. There's no doubt, but let's face it. There are some things that, you know, you just – you don't like to do or you don't like about <laughs> it like anything else. You're just terribly lazy. <laughs> yeah, just that. So, uh, so, Jesse, what's something you just don't like what? about playing? There's not too much that I don't like that I, I, I can say that I don't like except that, you know, just the maintenance kind of stuff is annoying. I mean I wish I had a guitar. I didn't have to change strings and adjust – once or twice a year and all that sort of thing. Although, truthfully, you know, you throw on a movie and it's kind of fun to sit there on the floor and do that stuff. So I guess I can't even say that. But as far as the difficulties in, like, practice, it's really just kind of the – it's really funny because like, <laughs> when I've had students, you know, you kind of get on the case a little bit about, like, all the distractions of the modern world, you know? Because, like, you know, I, I'd say, like, back in the day, um, it was so easy to practice guitar because there was nothing else to do. <laughs> Right. When I, I mean, you know, this is going to be funny because this is one of those walking uphill to school both ways kind of stories. But it's like, you know, during the summer when I was a kid, middle school, even high school, it's kind of like I there was nobody around my age. I live out in the middle of nowhere and there was like four channels on the TV, you know. And so what do you do? You know, you play guitar. Now it's like I don't know how these kids find the time to do 
Well, you have to have a passion. You have to be, this is what I just want to do, you know? And so um, that's going to kind of cut down the number of people <laughs> just because you, know, you got the kids with passion and the people who are just bored and you don't have them. Um, and, and I run into that now. I mean, there's so much stuff just on the, my thing is the internet. So I get ADD. And it's like, and I like to go look at musical stuff and guitar stuff and all this. But I mean, those are not fingers on keep on, on fretboard times, you know, except when I'm learning, doing lessons on, on YouTube or, or playing along with YouTube. Um, so really, that's just it. It's all the distractions that, that kind of pull me away and uh, and the lack of focus that it kind of causes. I think I have less focus now than I did in, in high school. It's really funny. Uh, it's probably the nature of our it must society be, right now. Because cause it can't yeah. possibly be me. <laughs> yeah, right. Because right. I remember I'd, be, I'd like go out in the garage and it was nice and cool. And there was like nothing around. I'd just practice guitar for a few hours in the morning. And it's just like... That's all the scales got in there because I know I wouldn't pick that stuff up as easy now, you know. Um, but, yeah, so though the funny thing is, you know, once you get into it and you've been at it for like an hour, you, it's like, hey, the time really went by and I'm improved at this thing. So, so yeah, I don't know if that was a really clear answer. <laughs> um, no, it, no, I think that's an acceptable Yeah, it's not that, that I don't like other than there's just – there's so much in the world now to, to learn and know and, 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 and it's just – I'm going to need three lifetimes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so what are, yeah. The, what are the things that Absolutely. you don't like? Uh, you know, I thought of this for a while and, and what came to mind uh, first was all the women that, you know, want to be with me now that I'm such a great <laughs> guitar player. <laughs> That's tough, you know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's hard. tough. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that's listening to the audio and can't see yeah, the yeah. Uh, the laughter, the sarcasm, right? The sarcastic look on my face. I want yeah. out. I'm tired of it's, all the drugs and the not, sex and the booze. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's such a hard life to live as a guitarist. So, no. But uh, all joking aside. Um, I don't like doing guitar exercises. Mm. I do them. I do them religiously. I do them every day I practice, which is just about every day. I I, um, I start with several forms mm-hmm. of exercise. In fact, probably a good 10 minutes of, you know, pentatonic scale exercises, string skipping exercises, the four finger exercise where you run up and down the mm-hmm. fretboard. Um you know, even scales, I link scales into the exercise thing because it's about the same time that I do the exercise session of my yeah. practice. And I, I do them and I know they make me better. It's like bad yeah. medicine. You know, I know it's good for me. I don't like doing it. I find it the most, you know, a boring part of, of practice. Yeah. But yeah, it's the ex- I know it's not a very controversial answer, but uh, it's the exercise. Yeah, there was. I hated them, I, especially the ones that didn't have what seemed to me to be immediate sort of musical applicability. So, like, I didn't really mind scales. I would do scales a lot. You know, I mean, I could do scales for like an hour. You know, and, and be like, okay, that's good. Um, but like the this little spider exercises, the four finger exercise, the ones that you would never find those notes in that order in, in a in a passage, in a run, right. I was like, I'm never going to ask my fingers to do that. Why should I be doing them now? <laughs> and so I would do a lot of scales, but not really those sort of just in general dexterity things. And I think it burned me a little bit because like I put so much time into scales. Like now my playing is very scalar. I mean, not that that's necessarily good or bad, but it's, that's why it's kind of ingrained. I think, um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I've done a lot of scales too, and I think I, I have similar symptoms. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, you know, my my guitar instructor was listening to me play today, and uh, he said, "All right, he goes, if I were an evaluator and couldn't see you, like I was just behind a curtain mm-hmm. or whatever, I would describe your playing in the following way: you play all the right notes, you know, good job staying mm-hmm. in key, right? No problem with that. But you play yeah. safely." You know, and that's from sort of my mindset of basically this is the scale. This is what I'm allowed to play. Right. 
and as opposed to the, I don't know, this more loose style sure. that many other players mm-hmm. have. And it's part of my personality. I'm kind of a, a, a rules kind yeah. of guy. And I know that, you know, it's like, this is how you, this is how you approach something or this is how you do mm-hmm. something. And that's something I have to work on to try to break that. And I think practicing scales all the time I have done has helped sort of that habit of mine, almost yeah. like a crutch. It's funny because you, well, the one thing is you have to know the rules to break them. So you sort of have to internalize all that stuff. It's like learning your alphabet and then learning words and learning your you know vocabulary and syntax. I mean, you have to know all that stuff. Then you can break the rules if you want to make your poetry or whatever. Um, but it does inform what you do. So yeah, you can, uh, can get into ruts and we all have that human thing of we play what we're good at, which is the, I mean, if, if, yep. if I had to tell anybody, what's the one piece of advice is practice what you suck at <laughs> because it's really yes. hard to, you know, a long day or whatever it is, you know, it's like, okay, I want to feel good about playing guitar. So I want to play. I don't necessarily want to practice. You know, and so you play the things and then the same runs, the same scales, the same stuff that you do well, which is you do it well because you've done it a million times. You're going to do it a million and one. And so that's a hard thing to keep on top of yourself about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head, too. You know, you've had a long day at work. You want to come home and have fun. Blow off, you know, a few minutes playing guitar or whatever. The last thing you want to do is, all right, I'm going to work on this thing that – I struggle with my two octave arpeggios and sweet pick. Right. I went, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I want to spend my, you know, maybe I only have a half hour or 15 minutes to mm-hmm. play guitar that day. Do I want to spend eight of those minutes, you know, sort of hacking through some exercise or, or whatever the case might be, or do I want to play what I know I like to play and uh, not push those right. boundaries any? And it's, it's laziness sure. kicking in. And of course, it'll Absolutely. be different for everybody. I mean, like I do scales because that's what I've always done. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't one of these people who would pick up licks off of records a lot, which I think more people are like that, you know. And then so those people will play the licks that they know and, you know, skip the scale practice or something. Right. Well, that's what I do. I mean, I, I sink right into this pattern, these, these runs that I know and I know mm-hmm. that sound good. And, and, and when I'm doing it, I'm like, damn, yeah, I'm doing yeah. it again. And, but it's not, you know, but it's not like I stop. Right. <laughs> right? It's not like I say, hey, I'm going to go do that. And I, I should stop mm-hmm. before I do it. You know, it's it's just, it's laziness. But in turn, if you're having fun. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah. Is it, the is it therapy? Yeah. Is, you know. Because even. Yeah. Oh, there are guitar therapy oh, definitely. for sure. Yeah, when you don't care if you're following back on your crutches. You're just there to get away from the world sure. for a while. And it is fingers yeah. on fretboard and it is, you know, reinforcing at least some manual dexterity and, you know, whatever neurons that are at least doing that. So it's not a bad thing. It's just not an optimal thing. Right. I'm seeing actually, I can see guitar oh, therapy. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. So if anybody starts that, just remember, we yeah. we deserve a <laughs> Patent pending. Um, <laughs> right. Patent pending. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Especially now that we just got to talk, not talk about how lazy we are <laughs> no. about our practice. As if we're going to pursue a patent. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's, um, it's just one of those things about practice. Uh, you, you just – like you said, ultimately it's fingers yeah. on the and and applied mind. And that, you know, and it's really funny too because one of the things I tried to do is you know when when I was younger, of course, and had some time to sort of figure these things out is like what's the optimal way if I only have a couple of hours a day or something like that, what am I gonna work on? And of course, you compare yourself to these guys who are like you'd hear the stories about the ten hours a day practice guys and everything. Of course, they have no right. social skills, so whatever. But <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, your mind is kind of shot after a half an hour, an hour, you know, depending. And so it's sort of like, all right, well, you can still do some, you know, dexterity things after that, but you're not going to assimilate any more, like, con- you know, concepts. So it's kind of like, all sure. right, how do you practice smart, you know, instead of long or hard or whatever? So. Uh. Well, 
Yeah. Uh, I think smart practice is really small yeah. chunks. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, your attention, you can focus your attention five, seven mm-hmm. minutes maybe, you know, and then after those five and seven minutes are done, take a break. You can come back to that maybe after yeah. that break, but put the guitar down yeah. for a couple minutes and then go back to it. And I think that's probably a key element to smart practice. But again, if you only have, you know, 15 minutes to practice, then you're really looking at that's working true. things. Yeah, that's true. So it's... Um, definitely something to think about and, and you're right I, I i think one of my favorite ways of practicing or playing those with a, a glass of whiskey <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a great way to pass it is Saturday a relaxing night. thing yeah yeah you just uh I, and eventually at some point you can't make the chords anymore and that's, that's when you know to stop yep then yeah. you're done yep <laughs> Just Pretty don't uh, don't drop your guitar so, on the way to the guitar stand. Don't drop. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, do not drop that guitar. Um, so, yeah. So uh, I think this tonight's show kind of went all yeah. over the place. Uh, <laughs> we started out with "Don't you like it?" And we talked about good practice <laughs> habits. There is something else that we should talk about too, and I don't know if this is like a coincidence or not, but it's the 25th episode. It's also the 25th anniversary of Stevie Ray Vaughan's oh, death. How did I miss that? I missed that last year. Yeah, too. it's yeah, it's all over the place on Facebook and and Reddit and uh, today. And it has been 25 years ago today that uh, he died in a helicopter yeah, crash. Right when he was so, back and on fire. Oh, that's a terrible. Yeah, I did not mean that. <laughs> I um, mean, yeah, he, he had come back yeah. and he was uh, had a great album. He was doing you know great shows and he had, uh, from all accounts, he, he uh, they say yep. he had sobered up and uh, was on his way to to um, start I mean, mega stardom, like like mainstream. Yeah. Not that he's he he was pretty close to mainstream though for a blues. Well, player. that's true. I mean, there were some. Uh, he yeah. definitely had some hits, you know, early on. Well, right from the outset, right when he did uh, "Let's Dance," I, because he, I think he was in the video actually, Bowie's video. Um, yeah. I, I, don't quote me on that, but um, so yeah, I mean, he was there. He was a presence. But I think that last the In Step album had a couple of hits. I think uh, "House" uh, and "House Is Rockin'." I think that was. Uh-huh. I don't think top ten, but I mean, it was on the radio. Uh, Crossfire, I think, was on the on the radio. So yeah, he was definitely swinging. I think he had some top forty yeah. hits, which uh, that's that's huge as a blues player. That's huge, and you know, and as I was reading an article today about it, they had said that his success had actually opened a door to some of the older yeah. guys, like Buddy Guy, for example, and, and, and you know, gave access to things that he probably wouldn't have had otherwise. So it's, it's weird because you kind of usually think of older guys opening the doors for right. younger guys. And in this particular case, um, at this particular time, at least, um, you know, there's been some comments that have been made that, you know, he had opened the doors, uh, reopened the doors for people like Buddy Guy to come back. Well, one of the great um, things about Steve yeah, is he was very um, cognizant of the history and, and the, uh, you know, the previous generation. Yeah. And he was very, um, you know, aware of that and wanting to to kind of spread that, you know, the roots of that whole thing. And so he had yeah. some people that were willing to come along and, you know, and why not, you know, jam with this fresh new face who was crossing over into a bigger market. And so, yeah, it was great that he right. could do that for those guys. And I think he made, I mean, truthfully, he made blues a, a bigger thing and at that time. I mean, there was always, you know, Clapton and there were some other, you know, players and um, out there that were, but he was a big name, like you say, and there were top 40 hits. So, Yeah, absolutely. So I thought we should mention that before we uh, wrap up the show because it's an important piece of guitar history. Quite likely one of the best electric guitar blues players to uh, – electric guitar players to have ever lived. Of course, those statements are always that's debatable. True. But I think – in terms of Stevie, that's a pretty safe, uh, safe. Bet. All right, well, I wouldn't disagree with you. <laughs> he's my favorite yeah. blues guy. Yeah, I mean, that he's it's yeah. an era thing as well. But but there you go. And if you disagree sure. with us, write in. <laughs> Who are your favorite yeah. players? <laughs> say, 
Absolutely. And uh, we'd love to have a show topic of the uh, listeners' favorite players and we talk about them. So uh, please, please message us. You can tweet us at SST Show. You can post comments. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Well, with that, I do believe it's time to wrap up. So until next time, boys and girls, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 